Hello, everyone. I'm Nadine, the Business Development Manager at Dreams, and I'm here today to answer the question, VR is? But before I get into that, let me first talk a bit about Dreams. So to date, we've released over 12 VR games. We're probably best known for our most recent release, which is the award-winning Phantom COVID Ops. And we've also just announced Fract for the PlayStation VR coming this summer. Since 2014, when we first entered VR, we've grown from a team of 25 to over 110 people today, and we're continuing to grow. Um, we've also recently announced our move into third-party publishing with a $2 million fund to support other developers create and release their games. So very exciting times. So if you were to ask us to answer the question, VR is, you're not just going to get a hugely positive answer, but a hugely insightful one too. We Googled VI is, and the three most popular search terms that came up are dead, a gimmick, blurry. Now, is this a true reflection of the market? I mean, if you would have asked me back in 2016, perhaps, though, even then. But what about now? No, of course not. And the next most popular search terms that came up were VR is amazing, VR is the future. Now, is this a more accurate reflection of the market? Yes, of course, and I'm going to tell you why. So for this, let's first look at where's the VR market now. So forget about any Google searches or doom-mongering articles you may have read in the last 12 months. Because quite simply, the VR market is now growing at a quicker rate than ever before. I mean, it may have taken a few years to get to this point, but then new tech always does. And we've actually seen an 120% consumer growth of high-end headset sales in the past 12 months alone. And it's definitely becoming more attractive to developers and publishers. So what does that actually mean in terms of install base? So there are three main high-end headsets to consider. So you've got your PC VR with the key headsets being the Oculus Rift, the HTC Vive, and the Valve Index. Then you've got your PlayStation VR and your standalone VR. And uh, so in other words, that's your Oculus Quest. And then looking at the PSVR, it has an incredibly strong install base, which we believe is probably close to 6 million by now and continues to sell well. And then at the same time, we've seen really strong success with the Quest and Quest 2 entering the market. And Oculus have actually spoken publicly about some of the numbers and shared some successes of devs. So it's been fantastic to see all the news coming in, but I'll speak more about this in a bit. As for the PC VR market, well, you only have to look at the success of a game like Half-Life Alex, you know, to really know um, that there are a lot of headsets out there. But what about active players? I mean, are all of those PSVR headsets sold still being played? Well, clearly not, but it's still doing well. And Sony is continuing to support the headset with great content. You know, as mentioned earlier, we've just announced Fract for this summer alongside the likes of Doom, and we couldn't be more excited. But when you look at this graph, um, it's clear that it's those standalone headsets which are taking over the largest active install base covering almost 50% of the VR market now. And this is driven by the success of the Quest and the Quest 2. So why is this? Well, quite simply, the Quest has done a brilliant job in addressing accessibility issues around VR. And we see this as affordability. 
So the price point is now less of a barrier and there are no other accessories needed, which leads to immediacy. You know, it's a straight out of the box solution. That's completely wireless. So in other words, no cables, you don't need a PC, you don't need a phone, you don't need a console. And it's the ease of use. So the Quest provides a six off inside out tracking with fully functional hand tracking ability. Not only that, it's also easy to stream and cast VR on TV and therefore helping evangelists to spread the word. And lastly, familiarity, not just in terms of how players are more familiar with VR, but just with more and more IPs like Star Wars and The Walking Dead being available for the headset. And all of this has really led the quest to of being an unquantified success. And I'm sure you've probably heard a lot about this in the news. So when earlier in January of this year, Andrew Bosworth from Facebook announced that the Quest 2 surpassed the original Quest's monthly active users in less than seven weeks. And then most recently, Oculus have announced that over 60 titles have made more than $1 million in revenue, of which half made more than $3 million in revenue, and of which 15 titles have made more than $5 million in revenue. But we also expect the recently announced next PlayStation headset to have an equally positive impact of VR growth. And then at the same time, you know, with rumors of other new headsets coming in at some point, hello Apple, <laughs> amongst others, expect the market to continue its acceleration. So headsets are one thing. However, we also need good games for them. But luckily, there are plenty of them and games are getting better and better. But actually, what makes a good VR game? So we can look at a few titles here um, to get a top line understanding. So it's your Beat Saber. You know, it's immediate, it's accessible, just seeing or playing the game, you instantly get the VR appeal and benefit. Walking Dead, you know, along with other IPs like Star Wars, it's a familiar IP that just draws in new audiences to the tech. Population One, great example of genres you know and love, but are designed for VR. And then Phantom Covered Ops, is the innovative design specific to VR wrapped in a thematic premise like the uh, military stave sim here that appears to those core gamers, to which actually all of these games are for core gamers first and foremost, to firstly play by themselves, but also to advocate and demonstrate to friends and family. So there is a through line with those games in that they need to be VR-only titles. But then what makes VR both great and compelling to players? Now, this is something that we've researched over the years by looking at you know, the, the changing trends in the market, talking to first party, looking at the data, conducting player research. And all of this has led us to five key things. We're actually treating these as our internal pillars, um, which we use to ensure that our own games and also the games that we will be publishing in the future are as fantastic as possible. And that includes fictional teleportation. So the ability to visit incredible worlds and locations that you just cannot access in the real world and that was always a central part in how VR was marketed early on. And in some ways, it still is. And the same with emotional amplification, you know, feelings of fear, tension, wonder, delight. They were all central to early VR experience, whether, you know, it's visiting a haunted mansion, 
or going to outer space. But why is they are so important? They're not the only considerations, certainly for us. So who you are embodying is incredibly important. You know, the role or character um, that you are needs to be appealing and aspirational. Not only that, <clears throat> you also have to be empowered in both the role you are, the world you're in, and what you're weirding in your hands. You know, may that be um, a physical weapon, a tool, or even magical powers. And then lastly, high agency. Really connecting you to the world you're in. Using that tactile tactile one-on-one -on -one interaction that behave as, you know, you want and expect and we think that this is arguably the most important part of creating an immersive VR experience. So we've got the headset, we've got the games. We also now know what the players are looking for in a VR game. But how can you ensure your game has the best chance to succeed? It can be really difficult to bring a VR game to market successfully, primarily because it's just a very different market to non-VR. I mean, we've spent the last seven or so years getting our heads around, um, just learning from our failures and successes. And that's mainly due to just the lack of discoverability, the limited market data that's out there, and you've got different first-party partners and constantly new marketing challenges. And all of these things um, have to be contended with. But we see three key drivers that can really help developers launch a game successfully into the market. So firstly, ensuring your title at its heart is fantastic VR, that is compelling to core gamers. Now, what does that mean? Deliver against our VR pillars or just make your own. Ensure the product proposition is really gettable, appealing and compelling. And not only that, ensure you communicate in this to people effectively. You know, test on others like gamers, publishing partners like us, even your friends and family, just to make sure that message and your game is as clear and exciting as it can be. And then secondly, relationships are key. So that's anything from first-party platforms, fellow developers, VR media, and creators. The more you talk to everyone, the better picture you start to build. They can really help you build your understanding even open opportunities like funding or give you a platform to speak to potential fans. And if they are um, people who, you know, you can't reach or, or contact, find somebody who can get you that intro. And then thirdly, be realistic, have realistic expectations. You know, the rate of growth and the future opportunity in VR is incredible. There are quest games that have generated one, three, five, even $10 million. But don't bet your company's future on expecting these multi million dollar returns. As such, just don't make multi million dollar VR games. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> We've actually found success by doubling down on areas of the games, um, which are special in VR and important to the core VR gamers. So in other words, executing the game really well is usually better than more content. So what about the future? What's next for VR? Well, in terms of headsets, we're going to see rapid progression via next-gen console power. Innovation in screens and mobile technology, lag-free, 5G streaming, hand and finger tracking, and haptics. And this will result in better graphics and higher fidelity and smaller, more accessible form factor glasses like the ones that you see here, and also lower price points. 
you know, through less tech, tech included and, you know, plus you've got your larger economies of scale. And as a result, well, you're going to get higher quality, more accessible VR at a more affordable price point. And we are, we are far closer to this than I think everyone realizes. Let's just look at it. You know, you've got hand tracking tech that's already live on the Oculus Quest. You've got your haptics that have been announced for the next gen PSVR. Cloud streaming with lag times within what is acceptable for VR are already being prototyped successfully. And the PS5 is already capable of run, running next gen experiences at 4K resolution and 90 frames per second, more than what you need for VR. So called uh, thought leaders have always um, talked about VR's moment being just around the corner. <laughs> and we've always taken a more conservative approach as a studio. But actually, the signs of this happening are starting to really come into view now. So what does all of this mean for VR games, though? I mean, you have more power plus a larger market, which essentially enables bigger, better games. And graphics, scope, and IP will all play a really big part, of course. However, fantastic VR first experiences that truly make the most of both what the platforms are now and what they can be is essential. So as a studio, we're as much interested in innovation around you know, multi-stage analog interactions, um, haptic feedback and rich character interactions as we are about better graphics. Just taking Half-Life Alex as an example, is largely seen as the high point in VR so far. We see the progression coming from richer, more engaging virtual reality gameplay than through bigger scope and or better visuals, which folds it back into what we're looking for now. The first steps uh, into this are all entirely possible in VR today, as long as games are designed from the ground up with VR in mind. So, in conclusion, VR is already amazing, engaging millions of players and delivering success to VR developers. And the exciting part, VR is already the future and starting your VR journey now is only going to reap rewards in the coming years. Thank you very much.